Okay, so what I want to talk about today is Apache Kylin. So a lot of people may have heard about there's a number of Apache projects coming up every week, essentially, so the whole community changes. But one of the most interesting projects, which I find is very, very interesting at the moment, is Apache Kylin. So, and that comes with a challenge at the same time. So when I proposed the session today, I thought, well, it might be doable in 20 minutes. Then I walked through all the slides and said, well, there's certain assumptions you can make, because I believe everybody knows what Hadoop is, right? Everybody knows what big data is. But does everybody know what OLAP is? Does everybody know what OLTP is? And this is a bit of the challenge that I want to cover today. So I walked through a bit of OLAP. So what is it? Why it's important? What challenges occur when you're dealing with OLAP in a big data space? And how Kailin solves these challenges, integrates with Hadoop, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about the roadmap, so where Carleen said it. And of course, if we have some time left, which I hope, um, I may be able to answer some questions afterwards. And I'll be there for the next couple of days as well. So very quickly, OLAP. OLAP stands for Online Analytical Processing. And to give you one example, one could say it's about beer. In fact, it's about a question that may be, how many beers were ordered in Germany on a yearly basis? Or to be even more specific, how many beers were ordered in Germany on a yearly basis broken down by month? Right, this is questions that everybody wants to answer, right? Being in retail, being in business analytics, being in business intelligence, this is the most important questions. Germans drink beer, how much beer do they drink? When do they drink beer? Where do they drink beer? Et cetera, et cetera. Just to give you an example. And what you can do with OLAP is you can build something which is called an OLAP cube. An OLAP cube may look like this. This is just a graphical representation. And I may actually be able to ask a question. So which or which amount in liters or whatever it is, right, was drank in Hamburg in May. So that's a representation of an OLAP cube. It consists of two basic things. The first one is it consists of measures. So measures are numeric values. They're also called facts. And it consists of something which is called a dimension. And you can see that maybe products, that maybe some things about orders, that maybe some more granular things that you can actually filter on. So that's basically the filter criteria, and you have the numeric, the facts, the measurements to actually have an aggregated sum or an aggregated number of something that could represent whatever it may be. So, if you look at that now from an OLAP perspective once again, you can do certain things which are called OLAP operations, right? You can do things like, well, I want to know how much beer was consumed in Berlin over a certain time frame. And this is incredibly great for analysts because it's a model they can greatly work with, right? So you have a relational data structure in the background, which typically works in a relational database. And this is very good, that's a great idea, but now we came to a world where we talk about big data, right? So what is that relational model, cube building, etc., in the world of big data? Right? So how can we do that? So, and some folks at eBay started the project called Kylin, and Kylin is supposed to be the extreme all-up engine for big data. Kylin, as far as I remember, is sort of a dragon thing, something mythical, like a strange creature that existed sometime 100 years ago, and for some reason was chosen as the project name. However, it got open sourced uh, late last year. It's currently incubating at Apache, and they are targeting an initial release fairly soon. So expect to see more out of Kerlin in the near future. And the goals are really to provide subsequent queries on, let's say, really large volumes of data, like billions and trillions of rows. You want to be fully NC compliant, NC SQL compliant, because all the analysts, all the people in the data warehouse, all the business intelligence people, they all know NC SQL. And they also want full OLAP statements. They also want to have full OLAP compliance. So they want to work with a database or with a system that may look like a database the way they have worked with a database before. And what they also want is no one 
in the BI world wants to work directly on Hadoop, right? They want to use their fancy applications, they want to use the Tableaus, the Platforras, the Datamirs, the SaaS, whatever systems exist on the planet, and they want them to smoothly integrate. They may change the engine, so they don't necessarily care if it's a database in the back end, but they want their front end tools, they want it beautiful, they want it fancy, whatever you may call it. And the other thing is, what they also want to target is to have really a platform that scales to thousands of users. Right? You have to think of the scale of eBay, right? So there's not something they played around with, but they use internally to produce exactly these cubes on large-scale data sets. And you can imagine eBay, well, that's a bit of data what they have, right? In terms of articles, auctions, categories, etc., whatever they can do. So what Kalin also does, it uses a lot of the components that exist in Hadoop. So it basically takes Hive to sort of pre-join, pre-articulate, pre-aggregate views and for queue building. It uses MapReduce to generate these excerpts, if you will. It uses HDFS and HBase to store the values. So imagine a cube being a key value pair. So there's a number of combinations, right, and key values in a cube. And these things are actually stored in HBase. So they query through an NC SQL interface and they interfere with HBase directly. So when you look at that more from an architectural standpoint, you have Hive on the one hand side, which is essentially used from a cube building engine. So it takes star schema data, the data you've seen, builds the key value data, stores that in HBase, and then we have a metadata, central metadata repository, and there's the number of Kylink components that does, for instance, the query engine does the routing, there's a REST interface provided, there's the ability to plug in third-party apps, or just using standard JDBC or ODBC type connections to interface with the system. However, what it can also do, it can route the low latency queries through HBase, which are really low latency, so I need my result in seconds on large-scale data, right? But it can also theoretically interface with Hive to get some mid-latency, some, well, minute to hours okay queries results. And if you look at the data flow, and I think this is uh, one of the most important things about the architecture of Kailin is really to have, we have an online data flow, which is everything that is in green, so these are the active components. And you get the blue data flow, which is basically the pre-calculation that has been done to make the data accessible, right, through a front-end application. And the more important thing is that the OLAP cube stays transparent for the user. So what they see is a database kind of structure. So it looks like a database, and this is the beauty of Hadoop, it can pretty much look like everything. It can look like a database, can look like a file system. In this case, it pretty much looks like what you would expect from a relational database standpoint. Some highlights about Kailin, because there's so much things to talk about, so just some highlights. Um, it's extremely fast at scale. It was made for scale. It was made to scale out. There's no, let's say, there's no, no thinking of having it single-threaded, so it all runs in parallel. There's multi-parallel operations, and it just scales as you grow. It should also provide NC SQL compliance, because all these tools are very good at creating NC SQL compliant statements. All these front-end tools are not necessarily good at creating Hive statements because Hive is just a subset, or Hive QL is just a subset of the NC SQL standard. So that's really one of the other design goals they had. And seamless integration, I talked about that some time now, but they want it to work with existing applications. So they really want to use it um, together with whatever front-end application, and they want to provide as I said, large-scale record scans, large-scale cube building kind of applications. Some more highlights. So it's actually pretty powerful for an incubating project, right? So this is something that is not particularly community-driven. It's something that eBay donated, if you want, to the community. And it's picking up crazily fast because it just runs on the Hadoop infrastructure that you just have. So there's no new, no fancy component involved, which is not proven for years. So it uses what has been in production, right? And this makes it very, very interesting to implement uh, Kailin. What it also does is it provides a very, very great graphical interface that can do certain things. So the whole cube design process 
can be done through a graphical interface. So there's no UI stuff, well, there's no command line stuff that you need to do. So you can actually say, well, here, BI admin, you know all the words, you know what BI looks like. Here, go ahead, design your cubes the way you want it. So this is how it looks like. You can scroll to that, you can work through the process, and it will come up with a graphical representation. So as you can see, it's, it's easy to use, right? It provides some granular security. It provides the ability to do job management in Hadoop. So ultimately, you build the cubes, and it will result in a MapReduce job in the end. So this is all the way down to the Hadoop integration. And furthermore, and I think that's a really, that's a really cool feature, it looks a bit like Q. So for those of you who have played with Q, Hadoop user experience, um, it actually lets you query the data in a browser, but it will also give you some sort of an interactive feeling because it can produce the results and fancy charts, pie charts, bar charts, whatever you want, and it's all open source. So it makes it really, really easy to start with. So you don't have to start with, let's say, building everything from scratch in terms of a BI application, but you can say, well, I may try something using that interface first. And then we may see if we can go further or if we really want to put it to production once it's really GA, once it's a full top-level Apache project, but it will get there eventually. So a little bit on the roadmap and the history. So it's a fairly new project. So they started in September essentially two years ago, or one and a half years ago. And what they've achieved so far is in January last year, they announced a prototype. So it, take, it took them four months to develop a prototype. And it kind of escalated from there, really. So they added more and more and more features to it to provide what I've showed you. But this is where we are now. The red line should basically show mid of 2015, so it shifted a little bit to the left. Um, and what they also want to do, they want to have it more enterprise grade. So they want to integrate it with Excel. Right? It's, it's crazy how many people use Excel to run these kind of analytics, right? I think Excel is more or less the most used BI tool that exists on the planet, and I believe it will still be. And they are thinking about taking the Hive part maybe off and shift it towards Drill. For those of you who have talked, uh, who have watched Ted's session about Drill, which just ended a couple of minutes ago, um, they may think about that for faster cube building uh, or to query data ad hoc from a cube standpoint. And they may be able to add some capacity management, some automation routines, and possibly, and I know that's a big topic nowadays, integrate with Spark. So provide in-memory MapReduce, use the Spark framework to do all the aggregations, etc. So there's a lot of things these guys are actually doing right now. So how do you know or how some resources? So there's a Kylian site. It's now on the incubator and Apache as well. There's a Twitter account associated with it, so if you want, you can just participate. There's a source code repo, there's some Google groups, etc. And everything is about Kylin, and they are very, very happy if you could just help them contribute, test it, feedback to the community, feedback to the developers, to the committers. And this is how I want to conclude, and I'm open to take questions now. <laughs>